Good afternoon. Um, I'm going to talk about this word ego. And I guess for, yeah, I'll just tell you kind of my story and, and how I came to um, like hear about the ego and experience what I thought that meant and or didn't mean or whatever. So some time ago in the summer of I think 2011, I went to the nine day school with Byron Katie. And um, before I went, I didn't, I had only known of her five weeks prior to going. I didn't know what the work was. I didn't, um, at, at the time I thought, oh yeah, I'll go there and then I'll have more stuff, like more tools, life coaching. And I thought that would just be something else I can use with my clients. <laughs> hey. So essentially I had no idea what I was getting into. I didn't know what the, it was going to be about. But something did happen before I left. I knew something was fundamentally shifting, even before I left to go. Um, I can't really explain it. That was just anyway. So there was just I left everything at home: my phone, books, everything. I just left. I went completely as naked as I could. Um, so I was there for nine days. And it was kind of like this. It was like, I like the metaphor of like a birth canal. It was like squish, like everything I believed or thought or it was like squished and it was painful. It was like squished. And when I came out on the other side or out of this birth canal, it was like, there would just be like silent tears. It would just stream down my face. And while nothing had fundamentally changed, everything had changed it was kind of like a feeling of like i never knew and yet a feeling of coming home you know like of a returning it was kind of like living before it was like living my life black and white and constricted and then afterwards it was like technicolor and everything popped like everything popped flavors and sounds and smells and colors and everything I was looking at and it was like this wonderment again um, it was like once I had one piece of truth whatever what my truth was I couldn't stop it was like this non not able to stop the inquiry the self-inquiry became very alive in me it was very renegade uh, I didn't follow the rules complete no I didn't follow the rules <laughs> um, so prior to that I had not heard much about the ego like in a spiritual sense, because I hadn't been in a spiritual community, I hadn't been reading spiritual, I hadn't been a seeker that I knew of, and so I came out and I started to be more exposed to like the ego and the mind and all these different, what, what appeared to be what we were talking about as separate things, but I couldn't really understand it, because my only reference point was like, you know, um, like, don't be so egotistical, I would hear, you know, growing up, and I didn't have a clue what ego, like I asked my 13 year old, what's, what's an ego? And he said, it's, um, it's like ego, an egoist. And I said, what's that? He's like, I don't know. So even at 13, he still is unsure of like, what is that? And um, I don't even know what that is. So you know, I, I get that. But so I started hearing about this and I started listening to some people talking about how you have to get rid of the ego and it's all the ego's fault that we suffer. And it's, um, and it's the mind and you have to overcome the mind and you have to destroy this and destroy that. It was like trying to like a, cut something off and I, I went and I was like looking and looking and looking and I couldn't find it now I could create an image um I could create like an idea of what I thought the ego was it was this thing to blame but I couldn't actually find an ego and that you know, I began to realize and I really investigated it and I'm like it doesn't exist and so this is my experience of what happens or what happened to me anyway was like all my life I experienced myself as the hand. Like I really thought this was me. This is that's whole that's what that's all there is to me. Like be, below this didn't exist. <laughs> I thought that was me. And then all of a sudden, boom! Oh my god, there's this the rest of my arms and my body and my hair, and it's like, ah! Get rid of it! Kill it! Ah! Right? Because it was something unknown. Totally unknown. 
And now, that last thing of wanting to get rid of it, like it's not real, it's not natural, that's not part of me, was so, it was a very brief point for me. Because then it's like I just fell deeply in love. And there is no part and parcel of this experience that I am. It's, you can't find, you can't get, you wouldn't cut off the ego any more than you would cut off your own hand. We're not parts. I mean, language is really weird. You know, we'll talk about a part of me feels this way or a part of me thinks that way or my mind does this and my body does that. We're not like that. It's not... There are no parts. Everything is it. So if there were to exist an ego, it's not the enemy. It's not this thing to try to hack off or kill or destroy. If it were to exist, my inclination would be to embrace it. To say, oh, hi there, honey. Come on in. It's okay. You can rest here. It's all right. And what I find really interesting about the ego thing is like, it gives a place for pointing the blame. It's the ego's fault. It's the mind's fault that I suffer. And the, blame, the thing is with blame, it's really, really, you know, if you're blaming the ego, everywhere you look you're blaming, you're pointing the finger at something. Something has to be at fault for all of this. For the sadness and the depression, and there's some, someone or something has to be at fault. So it goes from being me to being my ego that's at fault. And then I go after it. I go to war with a part, a part of myself. It's like, I might as well burn my hair off because it's not the right color. Or cut my finger off because I burned it. It's no good anymore. It hurts. It hurts really bad. So I think I just cut it off now. It's like, as long as I'm attacking the ego, I stay away from responsibility at all. Some, you know, I'm trying to find responsibility. And my own experience here of responsibility is no shame, no blame, and no guilt. Zero. In any direction towards me or this way. None. It's like in every direction there's just no guilt, no shame, no blame. Zero. That's when I sit in absolute responsibility. And so long as I'm pointing it out at the ego, I'm going to point it out in you and you and them and that. As long as I think I need to get rid of something, I'm not going to be able to see it or heal it or accept it. It's my enemy. And it's just made up. It's like this made up enemy. I'm going to go to war with myself. Now, it was very useful for to me, for me, for a time, to believe in the mind as a this thing that functions and isn't part of, exactly part of me, you know, as I started to take apart concepts and ideas and look at things and inquire, it was very helpful to kind of have that metaphor of the mind, but that's all it, at, at, at one point it was very clear that's all it is, it's just a metaphor. It's not something separate or other or outside or wrong or bad or needs to be controlled or It's a part. It's it's not a part. It's it's me. If if there is a mind, I'm it. If there is an ego, I'm that. I can't be anything else. Like if it if if it exists, then I am that. I haven't found the ego. Not here. Not there. Not anywhere. Not in anything I've looked for. Loving, the, loving yourself and loving this experience, loving the ugly bits, like the ugly, ugly bits, the bits that are hurt and suck and, and, and just the awful stuff, loving that, the ugly bits, that's what I call healing. And so at first it might not feel like loving, it's just like I see that and it's okay. 
I see that I was being a really big jerk. I see that I was manipulating. I see that that was taking place. And it's okay. And there's no blame. There's no shame. There's no guilt. There's just a seeing, a clear seeing. When I do this or when this happens, I experience pain. So it can't be true. Because if it hurts, it's not true. So if you are feeling pain because of an ego, it's just not true. Truth doesn't hurt. At least in my experience. It hurts to the point that I accept the truth for myself. The resistance and the ag agitation and the stuff that I have to let go in order to see the truth before my, right before my face. That can be painful. But actual truth itself, well, my truth, I don't know what anybody else's is, is 